What's better, spending thousands of dollars on a TV or spending thousands of dollars on a Vision Pro? Welcome everybody, welcome to Apple Insider. It is Andrew here, and if you guys know one thing about me, other than the fact that I'm a fan of Apple and technology, it's that I love movies and television. I love every bit of the process from the actual screenwriting to the production to the theater and viewing experience. I just love all of it. And I have spent within my budget thousands of dollars on my home theater system to get the best viewing experience that I can actually reasonably afford. Believe me, there are much crazier setups than what I am working with. But honestly, after the last few days of using Vision Pro in my home, I'm convinced this is easily a replacement for a four, $5,000 TV or home theater system. Let me tell you why. There's no denying that Vision Pro has outstanding displays. Seriously, they have done some incredible work to make the actual displays inside this headset second to none. For example, it's using micro OLED technology for the actual screens themselves. The benefits here is there's no screen door effect. Everything just looks pixel perfect, uh, but you're also gonna get screens that are more than 4K resolution. So when you're watching a movie, you're getting roughly a 4K video stream blasted into each eye. On top of that, because they're OLED, you're gonna have incredible contrast ratio, basically infinite contrast ratio with super deep inky blacks that look amazing. Plus, it is very bright. In fact, it supports both HDR10 and Dolby Vision. Dolby Vision is a spec that many TVs don't even support fully, and Apple has been able to support it here on Vision Pro. Whenever I'm watching anything that's either like really dark or very bright and explosion heavy, like John Wick or any of the Avengers movies, it looks so cool. I mean, the blacks come through so well, and then the explosions just like are pops of color, and it looks so great. Apple even put a bunch of thought into this for literally media consumption. Like this was one of its actual use cases that it really envisioned this for. For example, it built in multiple refresh rates, specifically supporting things like 96 hertz, which is ideal for 24, second, 24 frames per second content, which is what a lot of movies are filmed in. And it'll be able to play them back completely stutter free and looking ever so smooth. I, I absolutely love it. And I noticed no stutters at all while watching plenty of movies and TV. Another thing that I love is that Apple has put in some awesome speakers here. So it has speakers built in on either side and they sound really good. Almost everyone that I've let try this out, one of their first things is like, whoa, those sound like really good speakers. And they're spatial speakers, so they port, support 3D audio that sounds like it's coming in front of you, behind you, left to right, or even above you. And they even support Dolby Atmos. Putting aside the screens, the speakers, and all those technical abilities, there's a lot more that Vision Pro has going for it. You likely heard that Apple has all these different environments that you can immerse yourself in, and I think this goes a long way towards pulling you into the content that you want to watch. I mean, you can go be sitting on a lake where there'll be a reflection of the movie on the water. You can put yourself into the Avengers Tower and watch the Marvel movies. Or you can watch in Max and put yourself in the throne room and watch Game of Thrones. My favorite is the actual like cinema mode from Apple that basically looks like a movie theater and just gives you this really large, lovely display that is just wonderful to watch on, takes away all of your distractions and just drops you into a theater, but in the comfort of your own home. Vision Pro also supports 3D movies. And I know that was a fad a few years ago with TV that has largely died away, but Vision Pro just makes it so compelling. And for many users, Apple gave them a massive free upgrade. iTunes supports over 200 3D movies from the available library catalog. And if you own any of those movies, congratulations, you just got the 3D version for absolutely free. I already had many of the movies that were supported in 3D, so I was able to quickly go and just jump into all these 3D movies that cost me nothing to upgrade to, compared to on a TV where you have to shell out for Blu-rays that are 3D and they're much more expensive. 
on the sports side of things, Apple is doing a lot to make sports more immersive. I mean, there's a lot that they're doing for soccer here in the US that looks great. They can basically put you like on the corner of the field. They're doing a lot for basketball. I love this video that my pal Brian Tong did that had a whole system set up where he was watching five different NBA games all at the same time, and it looked absolutely incredible, along with real-time stats, and you just pinch and move everything between about what he wanted to focus on and not focus on. It was mind-blowing, like there's no other way to watch basketball. The Apple ecosystem also really comes into play here. As I mentioned, it has very solid spatial speakers here, but if you wanted even better audio, you can pair your second-generation AirPods Pro with USB-C. These have things like reduced latency and lossless audio, which sound amazing, but they also support 3D spatial audio that comes from above, beside you, below you, like everything. Just even better audio without having to do anything but put them into your ears and they automatically connect and start working. Lastly, it is hard to argue with the fact that you can just take this with you. Yes, it has a battery and a cable that you have to worry about, but you can't take your TV with you out of the living room. Like, it's where it is in your house. You could take this to your bedroom, I could take this to the studio, I could take it with me for a car ride, I can take it with me on the plane, I can take this to go do work, and all the other benefits of Vision Pro. Seriously, when compared to a TV, this has a lot going for it. The biggest thing for the TV, though, is that with Vision Pro, you're watching alone. And it absolutely is a big downside of this technology. I mean, viewing movies in TV can be such a social experience and watching things just in case in a headset is, is almost sad. But at the same time, there's use cases for this. I mean, I know my wife and I, we have difference in movies. Like my wife loves a whole bunch of comedies and rom-coms and things like that, but I'm also big into action movies and uh, adventure movies and suspense movies. Watching those in Vision Pro makes sense because I'm already watching them by myself. In fact, it may make more sense because she can watch something else on the TV and I can watch something here. If we weren't going to watch the same thing anyway, I have a nice screen and she has a nice screen. Another difference is that a TV is like a shared utility in the house. I mean, I can watch movies and TV shows on it. My wife can watch stuff on it. Our son can watch things on it. My friends can come over and play games. It is a shared appliance that everyone can enjoy when it's their respective turns. But with something like the Vision Pro, one person can use it. And I don't mean at a time, I basically mean one person can use it. Anytime that you wanna let somebody borrow your Vision Pro, you have to go into Control Center and go into Guest Mode and enable it. And then you can choose what they have access to. But every time that they put it on, then they have to go through adjusting the eyes and calibrations and everything like that. There's no multi-user experience here where every person can have their own profile, their own settings, their own apps. This is literally a one person device and Apple would more or less like everybody to have their own, which at $3,500 isn't really that feasible. Plus it's undeniable that Blu-rays and 3D Blu-rays are going to look a lot better than anything through streaming. Even if you're streaming at 4K in Division Pro, a Blu-ray has so much more data and it's gonna look so much better on an appropriate TV. Finally, you have to worry about battery life. I mean, two and a half hours of watch time isn't a ton. So if you're trying to watch Avatar, you're not gonna make it all the way through. Same thing with Oppenheimer. So you have to make sure that you're tethered. Now, I will say, like, if you're sitting there watching a movie, you can plug it in and you're going to be fine. And at least you have the option of getting up and moving around that, as I said, you don't have with a TV. But it is something to take into consideration when comparing a TV to the Vision Pro. Finally, there is slight bits of warping with Vision Pro. I mean, you're still looking through lenses to look at these displays and around the edges, there'll be, you know, fringe warping going on and things lacking a little bit of focus. It's not bad, but it still exists. So what do you guys think? Am I crazy that Vision Pro would replace my $4,000 TV? I mean, a 77 inch S95C from Samsung was the last TV that I reviewed and it's as expensive as Vision Pro. And honestly, I'd rather watch movies in this and get a cheaper TV. To me, it just makes sense. But let me know what you guys think. Everyone's situation is gonna be different. Everyone's gonna consume content differently. And I love all the added benefits of Vision Pro such as the games and other experiences that I can enjoy. Let me know what you think down below in the comments or on Twitter at Andrew underscore OSU. You can also let me know on threads at Andrew O'Hara 941. Always stay tuned. I got a lot more videos coming your way.